Oh, 22 is is not the year to remember for for that many positive things. And I think as a as a world society, I think we felt it. There were many things when we entered 22. We thought, okay, we're probably coming out of COVID. We're coming out of of some of the bottlenecks. But it actually turned uh, completely opposite. So I think here 22 is is not a year to forget. It's a year to learn from. Uh, I think on a supply chain side, you have to be more robust and you probably also have to build more from a regional, a regional uh, point of view. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's a few learnings. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't just Vestas, of course. You look, look across the industry in Europe and everybody had problems. And yet we keep being told that the transition is alive and your companies and your company is part of that solution. Why does the reality of the business seemed to jar so much with the expectation. Yeah, no, I, I've been in, in Davos a few times and, and I think the first time was for me in, in when we look back in 20. I was a little bit of, of the feeling of actually if you put the ruler to the, to the cost curve, you can actually predict almost in the end of this decade, electricity and energy will be almost for free. It didn't happen that way and I think when you then reach a bump on the road, uh, from a renewable, sustainable, clean energy, hey, come on, everyone not questioning, it's the right thing to do. From a cost point of view, it's still the cheapest alternative to do, but it has to be that transition happens quarterly, annually, not just every second year when there is a, an election somewhere. Just uh, on a political question, do you get... Um disheartened when you see the Germans opening up a, an open cast coal mine and yet promising to have vast amounts of wind over the medium to longer term? I think I would probably have preferred to help the Germans uh, within the uh, six to 12 months to put some turbines up instead uh, because I think if you start doing that you also know that the decommissioning of some of those coal mines and others takes years in the other end so, so I think we could have done uh, alternatives if people have asked for alternatives. Uh, but there is a problem, and you and I have discussed this off-air already, and that is that Europe is moving at a snail's pace when, dare I say, other jurisdictions around the world, including the United States with the IRA as well, are moving at light speed as well. Why is it that time after time he and I come up this mountain and we speak to CEOs like yourself in all kinds of industries year after year and we see the, the frustration from men and women like you who are just fed up with being able to move at a snail's pace in Europe when other jurisdictions are moving very, very quickly. Yeah, no, and as I said, we are a global company and, and I think we, we, can, we can bring the best of the, of the practices. Have I simplified that rightly, though? <laughs> I think you're right. If you, if you sort of look at it, uh, I think we, we, we spend a fair bit of time being caught, at least in EU right now, being caught a little bit in the vacuum of if we have done more of what we planned to do from a target setting, we would have been in a less difficult and challenged position throughout 22 in the, in the energy supply. So therefore, now it is the time to actually change pace. And if you look at the IRA in the, in the US, it is remarkable that yes, it took some discussions, but in reality it went ahead with an IRA and now we're working out how we're then working with how the IRA actually but works. It doesn't even work on that level. Just one more for me on this one. Yeah. So, permitting. If there's one thing you could get from <laughs> the Europeans, it's just let's get quicker permitting as well. We seem to take so long to make a decision to do anything. I, I think we have to be, we have to appreciate. We, we worked for a couple of decades to build up uh, both a red tape, some will call it a bureaucratic uh, process and I think in most countries right now when you want to potentially wind some of that back come on people have gotten jobs and 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 built uh, pretty powerful positions out of that they're not going to give the red tape away uh, easily so I think there's 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 a little bit of of that and I will also bring up the other thing in a lot of countries you have actually delegated or decentralized the permitting process to a municipality come on if you're a mayor and you're up for a re-election in, in two or three years' time and you have no incentive to take a beneficial country national decision of yes. permitting, what's actually the upside? So, so one of our repeatedly again and again, let's sit down and also work in the current electricity and energy prices around the world. There's plenty of room to award the local uh, municipality uh, an incentive to let, permit. Let, let, me, let me just um, um, cut to the chase very quickly. You, you, you signed a, a big 
deal with Australia, with an Australian company, yep. 122 turbines to go to Australia. There are obviously opportunities in, in the United States as well. Um, to what extent do you think that your focus is going to increasingly be outside of Europe, given the challenges that you've stated? Is Europe going to fall behind? Sum it up for us. No, I, I, I don't think so. I, I think the world will be moving. And I think also here when we look at, I, come on, I, I'm, I've seen energy ministers and I've seen prime ministers and other stuff from many of the EU uh, countries. Listen, every, everyone is uh, fully aware. Now it's, 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 it's getting back to the drawing board and get it done. But if you look at it, uh, Brazil took uh, very, very uh, renewable measures uh, already five years ago. We built manufacturing localization in, in Brazil to fulfill that capacity. Uh, US is doing the same uh, now and has been doing it actually since 1992 when the production tax credit was introduced. So I think it's, it's just getting into the rhythm. And I think right now we, we, we just have to figure that one in, out in Europe. So I haven't written off uh, my European belief uh, and I will keep pushing for it because Europe deserves the electricity and the clean power.